Take, I had to look at how they were made first before I could start the process as it was. And the one that I found that I looked at was a shoulder broom, which I didn't really like very well. But it gave me an idea of how to do it. And from there, we make our own particular style, which isn't a shoulder broom, those square type things. I didn't like those very well. But they're an attractive broom and a good functional piece. But it is, it's, uh, it's been 30 years of running around doing this, and there's a lot of, lot of, lot of time involved in it. But they've come a long way from the very first ones yeah. till the ones we're making right now, which are really, really very pretty and extremely durable. You know, just a good quality broom. Now, we used to, we used to do woodworking right in here. We did uh, we made chairs and tables, and Ann used to cut letters, alphabet letters and things of that nature. And we sold those for years, and then we just saw the broom making down at Sturbridge and thought that'd be a nice thing to add to what we were already doing, because nobody else had that. And uh, we got so busy with the brooms, the rest of just kind of went by the wayside. So now we do just the brooms and, and the handles and that sort of thing. And, and we also make the wool dusters. Ah, yes. forgot that, because Ann makes all those herself. Yeah, the dusters, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to an auction in Westmoreland, New York, and we uh, put in a bid in for the broom machine and the cutter and the stitcher. And we got the bed and took the broom machine home. Yeah, now we just kind of worked on it to figure out how to make brooms, uh, how to sew them. Uh, and then from there, of course, we made a very basic, basic, basic broom. And 30 years later, we're still doing the basic brooms. But on the other hand, we do a lot of very, very decorative, uh, colorful, uh, hand-turned type work. And uh, just, just very nice, functional brooms, but yet attractive and different from anything you can find anywhere else. Personally, I've said it a hundred million times, George is a very talented person. Mm, uh, so he are you. really is talented. So are you. I mean, I don't know, it just, you know, I mean to get on that lathe, turn that the way he wants it, and he wants it perfect. He's, he's, to me, he's a perfectionist. He wants the best that he can do, and he does the best that he can do. Well, you know? 30 years, it better be pretty, pretty Yeah, if it's <laughs> not, forget it. But I mean, <laughs> that color wood, I mean, that is just gorgeous to me. You'd rather have something that looks nice to clean your floor with yeah. than something that doesn't. Yeah. And you know, and so that's why, you know, and, and you really uh, get a, uh, a wonderful reputation from this. Mm -hmm. I mean, people come up, I just came here to buy this broom. Oh, I didn't yeah. come in for anything else. I want your broom. Yeah. I've heard, I've got one for the camp, one for the trailer, one for the house, and that's the way it went. Well, it's, yeah. it's a whole bunch of steps, and it's a, it's a you know, bit of a process. It takes probably, I will just to make wrap the broom, and then to have it sewn is a good 20 minutes tied up, forgetting about the finishing process, and and all the preparation work to get started. So it's a, it's it has a lot of a lot of involvement, a lot of work, a lot of steps, and it's just something you do do either, you know, because you like to do it. You're not gonna make a lot of money at it, but it's fun to do and right. Yes, it is. Uh, I always call it a miracle because you take something like George did, a broken broom in the field. And you come back home and you put it on the machine and you learn how to make brooms. And, and not everyone can do that. Pulling that wire is a lot of work. And you've got your nails and this and that and the other thing. And to make them the way they are, no one has that I know of. Colored brooms, turn brooms, woven brooms, uh, whisk, kids, fireplace, just a whole bunch of different varieties. And, and it's a dream come true. Because when you figure you can just go out in the field, get that broom, and make a broom from that, I, I feel it's, it's a very big talent, you know, because not everyone can pick up a broom in the field, come home, and make a broom out of it. Mm -hmm.
I really didn't think I could do any painting. They're very simple, but my daughter had done all of them for years and moved away to Seattle, Washington. So now I have the job of painting, which I love. You know, uh, it's fun. Yeah. Um, I hope I can do them for many more years. And for the for the hand dyeing, we used to get them from uh, a, a company that they were already dyed, but some of the dyed would stay right on you and yeah. even get in your hair. It was, it was really sloppy. So George said, gee, you know, I, I can probably do this better and, and it would, you know, wouldn't come off on your hand and in your head and on your phone yeah. and everywhere else. And so he started to hand dye the uh, the colors, which I've never seen at a show anywhere that no. someone has no. hand dyed broom corn for the brooms. I think that's wonderful. They're, it makes them look so beautiful. Yeah. And everyone says, well, gee, I don't want to use this broom. It's so pretty. I said, no, no, it yeah. will be the best broom that you ever use. Mm -hmm.